Good morning, my dear students in P62, P62 So welcome to this uh, virtual class for week 13 and 14. And this is all about electromagnetic wave. For our learning objectives, at the end of this presentation, you will be able to discuss, describe, or explain discovery of electromagnetic wave. Malus do. and anatomy of an electromagnetic wave. So, yan tatlo ang ating learning objectives in today's session. So, let us define what is an electromagnetic waves or EM waves. E stands for electro and for magnetic. So, these are waves that are cre created as a result of vibrations between electric field and magnetic field and are composed of oscillating magnetic field and magne electric fields. Okay, for the description, electromagnetic waves form when an electric field comes in contact with a magnetic field. So the electric field and the magnetic field of an electromagnetic wave are perpendicular at, or at right angles with each other. E for electric field and B for magnetic field are also perpendicular to the direction of the electromagnetic wave. So electric field is at 90 degrees ng magnetic field. Yung EB plane is at right angle sa direction ng electromagnetic wave. So theoretical understanding of electricity and magnetism developed rapidly during early 1800s and seemed to be, yes, E for electric field, B for magnetic field. Okay, again, theoretical understanding of electricity and magnetism developed rapidly during early 1800s and seemed to be complete by uh, about 1850s. So uh, when we, we try to look at, it's 50 years after no, matapos ng yung uh, theory about electricity and magnetism. So the laws of Coulomb and Gauss, kung ma-recall pa ninyo yun, yung describing electric forces and fields, and sa uh, part ng magnetism, yung kay Ampere's law and Faraday's law, describing magnetic forces and fields, were verified in many experiments and provided the basis of new technologies as key parts of industrial revolution. So, si physicist James Clerk Maxwell is famous for his theory of electromagnetism which showed that light was electromagnetic radiation. Again, light was electromagnetic radiation. And this theory is considered to have paved the way for both quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of special relativity. Electromagnetic waves are used in many applications, including radios, radar, microwaves, microwave ovens, cell phones, and wireless internet, and mga Wi-Fi. So life today would certainly be very different without these applications of electromagnetic wave. So for the characteristics, properties of electromagnetic wave, so these EM waves would travel with a constant velocity of three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second in vacuum. So what is this? three times 10 to the power of 8 m per second. Ito yung speed of light. Speed of light. So let's treat that as constant value for speed of light. So EM waves are deflected neither by electric field nor by magnetic field and are capable of showing interference or diffraction. Wave can travel through anything, be it in air, solid material, or in vacuum. It does not need a medium to propagate. 
or travel from one place to another. So unlike mechanical waves, na yung mechanical waves like sound waves and water waves, they need a medium to travel. So when we talk about sound waves, yung waves, uh, kailangan ng medium, no? yung sound waves. So ang medium pa sound waves, the air. Pag sa water wave, of course, water. So yung medium could be a solid, liquid, or a gas. But then, ang electromagnetic wave, uh, no need for a medium, no? Walang kailang medium para lang matravel ang, ang wave from one place to another. And electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. Kung ma-recall ninyo yung dalawang klase ng mechanical waves, the long, longitudinal and transverse waves. So, so, electromagnetic waves under siya sa transverse waves means that they are measured by amplitude uh, as height from the normal position or rest position. So, again, electromagnetic waves are transverse waves means they are measured by their amplitude, the height from the resting position or normal position ng uh, wave, and then uh, measured by wavelength. So ito yung distance between the highest or lowest points of two consecutive waves. So for the wavelength, pwede tayo magsimula dito to measure wavelength hanggang dito. Uh, by the way, symbol ng wavelength is lambda. Lambda. Or pwede tayo mag-start dito. This is a part, parang one-fourth itong part na to. And then another one-half, then another one-fourth. So one-fourth and one-fourth is one-half plus one-half is one, one wavelength. So it could also be mag-start tayo dito, tapos mag-end dito. So yung isang wavelength. Again, ang let letter symbol ng wavelength is lambda. So we also have this uh, propagation. So direction of propagation. Pag it, sa transverse waves, pag it twist, ay, 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 lagyan natin dito ng energy. So ito yung ma-form. From rested position. Simula, ganito yan, straight. Tapos pag i-disturb dito, ito na yung uh, magiging wave. So ang, ang propagation is to the right. So the highest point of a wave is called crest and lowest is throw. Electromagnetic waves can be split into a range of frequencies. Kaya yung makikita natin sa electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, it's not always to the right. So sa example natin to the right, yun. So, of course, uh, simula sa disturbance, away from the disturbance and direction ng propagation. So, kung ibaliktad natin yun, sa right tayo mag-disturb, papunta sa left ang propagation or ang direction ng wave. Okay, so again, electromagnetic waves can be split into range of frequencies. This is known as magnetic, electromagnetic spectrum. So, example of EM waves are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, X-ray, and gamma rays, and others. No? Okay. So, it is clear na ito yung amplitude sa pinakataas yung crest through ang sa baba. So, many physicists then wondered, can an electric field by itself produce magnetic field? So, the answer to that is that Maxwell hypothesized that it should indeed be possible. He proposed a modification of Ampere's law in which a time-varying electric field produces a magnetic field. A time-varying electric field produces a magnetic field. It turns out that Maxwell's new version of Ampere's law does not affect any of our work with Ampere's law. But in addition to giving a new way to create magnetic field, this new version of Ampere's law gives the equation of electricity and magnetism 
an interesting symmetry. So what is this symmetry? Okay, we'll say symmetry. This is made of exactly similar parts facing each other or around an axis. So, kung ma-recall, recall ninyo yung topic ng electric charge, uh, particular sa electric field, we have electric field lines are away from positive charge. Yung arrow away from positive charge and to a negative charge. Sa magnet naman, sa magnetism, yung direction ng magnetic field lines away from the North Pole at papunta ng South Pole. But then, ang kaibahan lang sa dalawa, sa magnetism, yung field lines would form a closed loop. So, sa electric field, hindi. No? So, Faraday's law says that changing magnetic flux, when you, kung ma-recall ninyo yung magnetic flux, yes, magnetic field times area. There are cosine of the angle between the line perpendicular ng area to magnetic field. Kung ma-recall ninyo ito. So, Faraday's law says that a changing magnetic flux produces an induced EMF. So, yung topic ng induced EMF, we have EMF is change in magnetic flux divided by time or delta T. Recall sa, last, sa mga previous na topic. And it, an EMF is always associated with an electric field. Now, since a change in magnetic flux can be caused by a changing magne magnetic field. We can also say that a changing magnetic field produces an electric field. Okay, so an electric field can produce magnetic field and magnetic field can produce electric field. Kaya tinatawag na electromagnetism. No? So can this loop or oscillation involve electric field and magnetic field continue. So with a new electric field producing a new magnetic field, producing a new electric field and so on. So the answer to that is yes. So self-sustaining oscillations involving electric and magnetic fields are indeed possible. So in fact, such oscillations are an electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic waves are also referred to as electromagnetic radiation. So that's it for the the two. Okay, for key feature of circularity, both electric and magnetic fields must be so both electric and magnetic fields must be changing with time, and a time varying electric field is set up by an AC current. Again, a time varying electric field is set up by an AC current in a wire or by moving electric charges. So leading to induced electric and magnetic fields. Okay, so Maxwell was the first to recognize that the equation of electromagnetism lead to existence of electromagnetic waves. And he worked out the properties of these waves in great mathematical detail. But then, uh, this is not uh, this is not actually included in our our scope sa general physics to ng STEM sa so, merong higher uh, physics sa college na so doon niyo makita itong mga equation ni Maxwell's so Maxwell's prediction of existence of electromagnetic waves was ahead of experiments of that time so in fact there was no experimental proof of the existence of electromagnetic waves until the time of Hertz. No? So Hertz demonstrated the regeneration and detection of radio waves in 1887. From 1850 to 1887, no? but then this is eight years after Maxwell's death. Okay. So many other workers contributed to the work of radio 
and related technologies, most notably Tesla and Marconi. Okay, so according to Faraday, Faraday's law at changing changing flux through given area produces an induced EMF directed <coughs> along the perimeter of that area. So this induced EMF is associated with induced electric field. And take note that the direction of the induced EMF electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field that produces it. In similar way, magnetic field produced by a changing electric field is perpendicular to the electric field that produces it. So as a result, the electric and magnetic field in the electromagnetic wave are perpendicular to each other. And the direction of propagation of an electromagnetic wave is perpendicular to both E and B. Now, uh, the direction of E and B and the propagation direction all depend on how the wave is generated. But then, the three are always perpendicular to one another. Okay, so this is it. Electric field is at 90 degrees from magnetic field. And electric field is 90 degrees to the direction of propagation, magnetic field is also perpendicular or 90 degrees sa direction of propagation. So, if this is our electric field, ito yung magnetic field. Okay. So, the direction is also naka 90 degrees from the electric magnetic field plane. So, uh, we have a charge, no? Vibrating charge would create a wave. Pareho yan kung meron tayong rope. Tapos, uh, apply natin ng uh, energy yung one end ng rope. So, ganito yung magiging wave. Ang propagation is away from the... So, ang, ang uh, direction ng pag-apply ng disturbance or you even force or energy dito up and down so ito yung a wave na na form transverse wave so a vibrating charge particle generates vibrating electric and magnetic fields this vibrating fields make up an electromagnetic wave so let us now summarize the three fundamental properties of all electromagnetic waves. First, an electromagnetic wave involves both an electric field and magnetic field. And these fields are perpendicular to each other. And I believe, alam na nyo what is an electric field kasi na, na discuss na natin ito. Siguro sa mga second, uh, second modules pa lang. Magnetic field naman, siguro from uh, this week, mga two weeks before of nadaanan na rin natin itong magnetic field. So again, electromagnetic wave involves both electric and magnetic fields. And one field is perpendicular to the other. And the two fields are perpendicular to the propagation and or direction of the wave. So yan ang importante na uh, fundamental properties of electromagnetic wave. Okay. So we have this Malus law. Sino pa ito si Malus? No? So, ang pangalan ni Malus is Etienne Louis Malus. He was a French officer, engineer, physicist, and mathematician and uh, known for polarization of light. So according to Malus, when completely plain polarized light is in incident on the analyzer, the intensity I of the light transmitted by the analyzer is directly proportional to the square of the cosine of angle between the transmission axis of the analyzer, transmission axis of the analyzer, and the polarizer. Okay. So again, Intensity I, 
is directly proportional to the square of the cosine of angle between uh, analyzer and polarizer. Suppose the angle between the transmission axis of analyzer and the polarizer is theta, the completely plane polarized light form the polarizer is incident on the analyzer. If E sub O is the amplitude of the vector electric field, electric vector, so transmitted by the polarizer, then intensity I sub O of the light incident on the analyzer is given by the equation. So I is directly proportional to the square of E sub O, the uh, amplitude of electric vector. The electric field vector E sub O can be resolved into two rectangular components. Kung ma-recall ninyo yung topic ng vector, uh, vector quantity sa General Physics 1. So itong E sub O composed of two components. Ito yung E sub O cosine of the angle and E sub O sine of the angle. So the analyzer will transmit only component E sub O cosine of angle, which is parallel to its transmission axis. However, the component E sine of the angle will be absorbed by the analyzer. Therefore, the intensity I of light transmitted by the analyzer is given by the relationship. So intensity is directly proportional to the E sub O multiplied by cosine of the angle squared. So with this, we have I is directly proportional to cosine squared theta. So this proves the law of malus. So therefore, I is directly proportional of cosine squared theta. So this proves, again, the, the law of malus. When theta is 0 or 180 parallel or anti-parallel, then I is equal to I sub O cosine squared of the zero. So therefore, I is equal to I sub O. So that is the intensity of light transmitted by the analyzer. It's maximum when the transmission axis of the analyzer and the polarizer are parallel. Now when the angle is 90, and therefore I is equal to I sub O cosine squared 90, and cosine squared 90 is 0, therefore I is 0. This is minimum. So ito, dito, this is maximum, minimum. So that is the intensity of light transmitted by the analyzer is minimum when the transmission axis of the analyzer and polarizer are perpendicular to each other. So next is the anatomy of electromagnetic waves. Okay. Uh, pag sabihin natin waves, for example, mechanical wave, hindi yun mangyayari kung walang energy na i-apply. So that, uh, let us define energy. This is a measure of the ability to do work. Yes, minimum pag perpendicular. Balik tayo. Okay. So na yun? Okay. Ito. Minimum. Pag perpendicular, maximum pag parallel or anti-parallel. This is parallel, anti-parallel, maximum. Okay, so balik tayo. Energy is a measure of the ability to do work. So it comes from many forms and can transform from one type to another. So example, we have a potential energy in the batteries and water behind the dam. We also have kinetic energy. So, charges particles such as electrons and protons kasi ang ating concern dito palagi yung, yung charge particles. No? Electrons and protons create electromagnetic fields when they move. No? So, there should be motion of charges. And these fields transport the type of energy we call electromagnetic radiation or light. Okay, so what is the difference between electromagnetic and mechanical waves? Okay, so 
mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves are two important ways that energy is transported in the world around us. Waves in water, sound waves in air are two examples of mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are caused by disturbance or vibration in matter. Yung matter pwede solid gas, liquid, or plasma. So matter that waves are traveling through is called medium. Water waves are formed by vibrations in liquid, while sound waves are formed by vibration or yung molecules bumping into each other you know, through gas. Okay, so water waves again formed by vibrations in liquid, sound waves, vibration in gas. So in the process, there is molecules bumping into each other. Like falling dominoes, transferring energy from one to the other. So kung nakita niyo itong dominoes na ipa, ipa stand ninyo, nakalinya, touch the first domino. Mag-effect yan dun hanggang sa last. Ganun yung sa uh, concept ng mechanical waves. Um, but then, molecules na yung nandoon. Now, sound waves cannot travel in vacuum of space because there is no medium to transmit these mechanical waves. Okay. So, we have this classical waves transfer energy without transporting matter. So, take note, ha? Ang, uh, ang matransfer lang yung energy, hindi yung matter. So, kung Kung i-disturb natin yung body of water, energy lang yung mag-transfer, hindi yung body of water talaga. So waves in a pond do not carry water molecules from one place to another. Rather, the wave's energy travels through the water, leaving the water molecules in place like this a little insect. No? So kung, meron, kung, kung ito yung wave, nasa position siya na ganito. Kahit how many waves pa yung dadaan dyan? No? Okay, so naka-steady lang siya dyan. Ibig sabihin na uh, energy lang yung nag-travel sa wave. Not included yung uh, matter. Okay. Electricity can be static. Static. So like energy that can be, uh, can make your hair stand on end. So pag mag-comb kayo, uh, Briskly sa buhok ninyo, especially if your hair is dry, then manotis ninyo na may uh, mga buhok na uh, attracted sa comb, plastic comb. So that's an example of static electricity. We also have this magnetism can also be static. So it is when uh, you observe a refrigerator magnet. So a changing magnetic field will induce changing electric field and vice versa. The two are linked. The, this changing fields form electromagnetic waves and electromagnetic waves differ from mechanical waves in the sense that or in that they do not require a medium to propagate. So kung ang mechanical wave like sound, yung sound waves kailangan ng air para ma-propagate, ang water waves kailangan ng water para ma-propagate, ang electromagnetic wave hindi kailangan ng uh, medium to propagate. So this means that electromagnetic waves can travel not only through air, solid materials, but also in vacuum, through vacuum. So in 1860s, 1870s, Scottish hen, uh, scientist named James Clerk Maxwell developed a scientific theory to explain electromagnetic waves. He noticed that electric fields and magnetic fields can couple together to form electromagnetic waves. He summarized this relationship between electricity and magnetism into what are now called Maxwell's equation. Again, this is not uh, part of our scope, no? Sa higher physics na ito. Actually, kung makita niyo yung mga computations sa physics, uh, calculus based na lahat. So, Heinrich Hertz, a German physicist, applied Maxwell's theories to the production of reception of 
graduates. So the unit of frequency, the unit of frequency of radio wave is one cycle per second. So name after uh, this German physicist, Heinrich Hertz. Okay, so 1895, uh, Marconi used radio waves to transmit signals over a distance of several kilometers. Their work forms, the work of Marconi and Hertz forms the basis for many important modern devices nowadays, including cell phones and Wi-Fi compu computer networks. So Hertz experiment with radio waves solved two problems. One, he had demonstrated in concrete, so I, in concrete, what Maxwell had only theorized, that velocity of radio waves was equal to the velocity of light, and this proved that radio waves were a form of light. Second, Hertz found out how to make electric and magnetic fields detach themselves from wires and go free as Maxwell's waves, the electromagnetic waves. So is, wave, is light a wave or particles? The answer is yes. Light is made of discrete packets of energy called photons, and photons carry momentum, have no mass, and travel at the speed of light. All light has both particle-like and wave-like properties. So again, light is a wave and a particle. So how, how an instrument is designed to sense the light influences, which of these properties are observed? To answer that, an instrument that diffracts light into a spectrum for analysis is an example of observing the wave-like property of light. The particle-like nature of light is observed by detectors in digital, used in digital cameras. Individual photons liberate electrons that are used for the detection and storage of the image data. So, yun ang instrument, no? Uh, sa na, na patunay na light is a wave and a particle. Okay? Okay, so next is polarization. One of the physical properties of light is that it can be polarized. So polarization is a measurement of electromagnetic field alignment. So as in the figure, we have uh, electric field in red. So this is vertically polarized. Electrically polarized. So kung ma-recall niyo yung electric field, maraming direction yung electric field, di ba? Kung sa charge, maraming direction. But then, uh, Sa figure, na polarize yan, wala yung other, absorb yung other directions. So, vertical. So, think of a throwing of throwing a frisbee at a picket fence. So, in one orientation, in one orientation, it will pass through. In one orientation, pag magkaganito, makapass through. No? And in another, it will be rejected. Of course, pag mag, uh, mag iba ang position nito, hindi ito maka-pass through sa fence. So this is similar to how sunglasses are able to eliminate glare by absorbing the polarized portion of the light. So polaroid, polaroid sunglasses are familiar to most of us. They had a special ability to cut the glare of light reflected from water or glass. Polaroid have this ability because of the wave characteristic of light called polarization. So, pariho yan ng ganito, no? So, a charge would give, uh, would have a field lines like this, but then, pag dadaan yan sa polarizing filter, may slit, no? Okay, so, because of this axis, so polarizing filter magiging a uh, vertically vertical yung uh, light huh? polarization direction so we have 
Polarizing filter has a polarization axis that acts as slit passing through electric field parallel to its direction. The direction of polarization of an electromagnetic wave is defined to be direction of its electric field. Okay, so describing an electromagnetic energy. So the term light, electromagnetic waves, and radiation all refer to the same physical phenomenon, electromagnetic energy. So this energy can be described by frequency, wavelength, or energy. All three are related mathematically. So if given yung isa, pwede makuha yung dalawa or makuha yung uh, other unknown. So yung radio and microwaves are usually described in terms of frequency. So the unit that is hertz. Yung mga infrared naman and visible lights are in terms of wavelength. That's meters. X-rays and gamma rays in terms of energy. The, the unit is electron volt. Okay, so what is frequency? This is the number of threads that pass in a given point with one second in this is described as frequency. Or the number of crest that pass a given point per second. So one. For example, ito one. The two. No? Cycles per second. So the unit is hertz. One over second is equivalent to hertz. Hz. So again, one hertz is one over second. So a wave with two cycles that pass a point in one second has a frequency of two hertz. So from this point, papunta dito is one wave, second wave, third wave. Therefore, this is from this point to, to this point, we have three hertz. Say, kung one second. Yan ang number of waves. Next is wavelength. So, ang wavelength from uh, from this point, papunta dito, or from top to top. So, electromagnetic waves have crest and through, similar to those of ocean waves. The distance between crest is the wavelength. The shortest wavelength are just fractions of the size of an atom. Shortest wavelength. While longest... So, Wavelength scientists currently study can be larger than the diameter of the planet. So, uh, may mga wavelength na uh, nearly straight na, no? But then, uh, yun ang shortest wavelength, ito yung longest wavelength. So, your relationship between speed, wavelength, and frequency is given by this equation. So, we Speed, therefore, is equal to wavelength times frequency. The unit of speed is meters per second. The unit of wavelength is meter. And the unit of frequency is one over, one over second. Okay. So again, the relationship between speed, wavelength, frequency is given by the uh, formula or the equation. So speed, speed is equal to wavelength times frequency. And take note, the unit of speed is meters per second because the unit of lambda or the wavelength is meters multiplied by 1 over second. So uh, the equation of uh, speed is equal to wavelength lambda multiplied by frequency. None. Okay. So if frequency is unknown, then that is equal to speed over wavelength. If wavelength is unknown, then it is equal to speed over frequency. So let us answer this simple problem. So what is the wavelength? So meaning lambda is unknown, wavelength of the electromagnetic wave that has a frequency of 3 times 10 to the power of 8 hertz. So, um, unknown is wavelength, given yung uh, frequency, then we can use this relationship. So, wavelength therefore is equal to speed. Now, why is it that we have 
3 to the power of 8 meters per second. This is because uh, kasi electromagnetic wave ito eh. The speed of electromagnetic wave is the speed of light. So that uh, ito yung speed of light. 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And we also have this frequency. Substitute natin yung frequency. That's O to the power of 8. So, 3 to the power of 8 waves per second. So, pwede na yan na. Pwede na wala yung waves. No, over second na lang. So, the unit now ng wavelength is uh, meter. Kasi makancel man yan. We have meters per second. So, sa speed dito sa taas. Multiply natin yan sa reciprocal na unit ng frequency. That's 1 over S, reciprocal. So, makancel ito, giving us the unit of meter sa wavelength. Okay, so energy. So, an electromagnetic wave can also be described in terms of energy. In units called electron volt. So, an electron volt is the amount of kinetic energy needed to move an electron through one volt potent. Okay, so an electron volt is the amount of kinetic energy needed to move an electron through one volt potential. Moving along a spectrum from long to short wavelengths, energy increases as the wavelength shortens. So, consider a jump rope with its ends being pulled up and down. So, more energy. Para gusto natin mar maraming waves, so kailangan ng maraming uh, greater energy. No? So, more energy is needed to make the rope have more waves. Okay, so... Next, the sources of electromagnetic waves. So the most important source of electromagnetic wave is the sun. But uh, there are also other sources of electromagnetic waves that depends on technology, like radio waves, microwaves, x-rays are examples. So this is the visible light spectrum. So uh, ranges from 400 nanometers papunta ng 700 nanometers wavelength. Visible light spectrum. So visible light and infrared are just a small part of the range of EM radiation, which is called electromagnetic spectrum. So this is just a part. So we have this complete electromagnetic spectrum. So dito yung nakanina, visible light. Yan ang makikita natin ng mga lights. Okay, so from radio waves, we have a longer wavelength hanggang papunta sa gamma rays, shorter wavelength. Bakit longer wavelength? Kasi pag radio waves to gamma rays, so kung tingnan natin, longest yung wavelength dito, shortest naman dito. In terms of energy, a lesser energy dito, greater, higher energy sa gamma ray. So, kung may energy sa left side sa radio waves, dito naman, big energy. Longest ang wavelength, or big ang wavelength dito, shorter ang wavelength dito. Okay. So, that's it. No? So, a longer wavelength, meaning lower frequency. So, small ang F dito. Shorter wavelength means higher ang frequency. Higher ang frequency, big ang frequency dyan. So, that's it. Sa electromagnetic spectrum. So, kung i-compare natin yung uh, wavelength ng radio waves from microwave, so, anong ma, uh, makita natin? Yung wavelength ng radio waves is uh, longer compared sa microwave. Yung frequency ng radio wave is lesser compared sa frequency ng microwaves. 
yung energy ng microwave is uh, higher than the uh, energy ng radio waves. Ganun, no? So, na-relate natin yung energy, frequency, and wavelength in a spectrum. Okay. Cell phones. Yung signal ng cell phone are carried the air as microwaves. So, it codes the sounds of the caller's voice in microwaves by changing frequency of the waves called FM. Yeah. Okay. So, cell towers reach high above the ground. Why do you think such tall towers are used? The answer to that, kasi yung signal ng cell phone carried by microwaves, then microwaves can be interrupted by buildings and other obstructions. So cell towers must be placed high above the ground to prevent the interruption of cell phone signals. So yung reason bakit uh, yung cell towers nasa taas. Okay, next. Which EM waves do you think have higher frequencies? Visible light or X-rays? Kung ma-recall ninyo yung visible light nasa center, central part ng spectrum, ang X-rays nasa right. So, saan sa dalawa have higher frequencies? So, it is obvious that X-rays are, are harmful, but visible light is harmless. So, we can infer that X-rays have higher frequencies than visible light. Okay. Next, which type of light do you think is harmful to the skin? Okay. Waves of light with highest frequencies have the most energy and are harmful to the skin. So, makita natin yan doon sa uh, spectrum. Room, electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so that's all for today. I would like to say thank you so much for attending this virtual class.